Coliseum is all about bringing game creators closer to you guys, the fans, um, to talk about uh, their games and what they're doing. And uh, we're going to kick off this morning with a company that has a game that's getting a lot of buzz here at E3, uh, CD Projekt Red. <laughs> you guys are into cyberpunk? Well, that's part of what CD Projekt does, but uh, this is such an incredible company, and uh, it's my honor to welcome to the stage the joint CEO of CD Projekt Red, Marcin Nowinski. Marcin? <laughs> see you, man. Nice to see you, man. Everything. With, I'm jealous with this jacket. This is a uh, official yeah, jacket. Look, even we have a punk symbol in the logo. You know? Exactly. It's, it's, it's <laughs> punky CD Projekt. Uh, well, first of all, congratulations. Um, you know, last year you guys had a big E3. This year, uh, yeah, it's incredible. You have a demo at the booth, but uh, I think we have to start with uh, what is the, the biggest buzz of E3, which is Keanu Reeves in Cyberpunk. Um, you know, I put a poll up on my Twitter. <laughs> and the thing with that is, uh, you know, it was amazing to have him on stage and, you know, have him in the game. Uh, but I think one thing that, we were talking about backstage, I think people should realize is that it's not just a cameo, right? I mean, he's a big part of this game. Yeah, actually, so I think uh, when uh, he entered the stage and people started cheering, and it was an amazing moment, but really the whole intention with, with Keanu in the game uh, was to have a very meaningful character that, that fits into the lore. And so uh, I think for us, really, if, if we look at all the actors out there, if we think cyberpunk, it, it's, it's Keanu. So we, we had a lot of, you know, back and forth, so and uh, we decided to approach him. Uh, it was uh, it was about a year ago. Wow. Uh, so uh, uh, there was a meeting arranged, and we showed him his, the script, and immediately he got into the role, and he really liked it. And uh, I think it's really worth to mention uh, because what, what you mentioned is a cameo. Maybe it's 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 just a short side quest kind of person. No, he's uh, the number two characters in terms of lines of spoken text. So actually, across the entire uh, game. Yeah, wow. across the entire game, and uh, I think we have something around 15-ish uh, days of voice recording in the studio. So wow. it's huge. It's huge. Okay. So you see a lot of Keanu, and you will hear even more of Keanu. That's a lot of one-liners. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> but that, so, you know, there's so much to talk about with, you know, CD Projekt uh, and the company. And obviously that's, you know, a buzzy moment that Keanu's in the game. But, you know. We're all here because we love your games. We love what the company represents, and uh, you know, cyberpunk, uh, what that is, and of course, Witcher. And I mean, I, you know, I, I want to sort of turn back the clock a little bit so people understand a bit more about you and the studio and sort of the history of CD Projekt uh, and building the company into what it is today. When you guys were first starting out, I mean, what was the what was the vision of the company you wanted to build? And how much different is it now from where you started? I, I, love, I love the question because, uh, like, going back in time, I started in 94, a lot of gray hair, as you can see. Um, and uh, I started right out of high school with a high school friend. So when you ask me what was the vision of the right. company, uh, was to be in the games, get new games, and uh, make some money if possible. If not, that's fine too. So that was the vision of the company, pretty much. Uh, um, and so uh, I started with my high school friend, Michal. Uh, um, so we were insanely playing games during our high school times, mostly skipping classes to so whatever the teachers were, uh, <coughs> uh, were looking uh, at our absences. Uh, we were both missing at the same time because we were going somewhere together to play games. And then right after high school, uh, uh, there was the whole you know, CD-ROM revolution, hence the name CD Project <laughs> afterwards. So you know where it's coming from. It's kind of simple. FMP uh, Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and um, we were the first in Poland to import uh, games on CD-ROMs. And it was a huge revolution. I, I, I think for, uh, for a lot of you, it probably will not mean a lot, but you know, moving from the floppy disk, uh, yeah, you can see them online or in museums, <laughs> uh, to CD-ROMs, it was you know, what, 450 times more data. So suddenly, yeah. uh, you had the option to have uh, VO, music, uh, and then, you know, amazing 3D graphics and, and, yeah. and digitized graphics. Huge, huge revolution. So that, that was the foundation of the company. We started as a uh, distribution uh, company in Poland. And distribution, uh, meaning me and Michal importing uh, two units per title and then selling it uh, over weekend at the local uh, games market. And then 
started growing, we started localizing games to Polish, doing PR marketing. But I think what is worth to mention here is that it, it was never a business. It was kind of lifestyle. So we are actually pretty bad with counting money and uh, <laughs> accounting. And uh, yeah, when our accountant told us what kind of errors we have in our files, we stressed at Miha for like two weeks or more. Um, so actually, we started with games, and then we're, we were adding all the elements and tops. And pretty much, initially, the motivation was to get the games for us that we want to play. So we're, I think we had a uh, very good pulse uh, of the market, what yeah. people want to play, because we, we were checking it all ourselves. And you know, doing it in Poland, in Warsaw, I mean, that's you know, I think one of the most fascinating things. And there's a you know, pretty cool community of developers there now. But I mean, when you were starting out, I mean, this was, uh, you know, this was yeah, it was, uh, I mean, just, just right now, you know, there's, there's a lot of great gaming companies in Poland that it's an amazing environment. And, and I think, you know, we had at least partly a role in pioneering all that. But uh, I still remember back in the day with Michal, probably, you know, five years of around uh, five years into running the company, 2000-ish, and we went to the bank. We wanted to get a credit, and uh, a credit line, if you will. And we, we prepared all these papers. I was doing that. It was a nightmare. Uh, it took me a good few weeks. And then <clears throat> we talked to this lady, said, yeah, you have, you have a lot of good revenues, solid profits, all looks well. Uh, and we'll grant you the credit. There's, however, one problem, boys. Uh, we need some collateral. So how about your parents' flats, houses, and cars? And we're like, <laughs> holy moly. <laughs> It's probably we are not going what to do say? that. <laughs> yeah, so we didn't get that credit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so my dad worked that supportive. <laughs> a few years later. Right, right now, it's much easier to do business. Uh, back then, gaming was like, I think th th this lady must have been looking at us like, what's that? I totally don't get it. And, yeah. you know, it's, 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 it's some kind of funny, silly thing for kids or, or whatnot. So it has totally changed. It's an important part of Polish economy right now. And, and actually, we, we are proud and... Uh, I think the defining moments uh, when um, uh, President Obama came to Poland for the first yes. time, he got a collector's yeah, edition of Witcher. of oh, Witcher 2. <laughs> and yeah, I, I think you know, from from like a worldwide perspective, it might not be a big thing, but internally for the country, yeah. suddenly you know, I, I'm I'm I know it's 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 the thing I'm constantly repeating. But whenever I was asked, uh, you know, what, what was Poland famous for? The first thing that were coming to my mind was, you know, sausage and vodka, um, <laughs> and you know, I've been repeating it on and on. But that was really in my head. I, I, I was always traveling a lot, and people were asking, "So, what, what, what is the strength of Polish economy?" I was like, hmm, "Okay, there were two things. Maybe I was not uh, very vocal uh, about it." And, and right now, I think I can honestly say say that these are computer games. Yeah. No, I would agree. I mean, that's and you know, credit to you and the company and how you've you've built C CDPR over all these. Um, Years. Do you see the company as always existing, kind of only in Poland? I mean, I know you have a you know small office here in LA, but I mean, do you imagine like you know skipping forward in the future? Is it, do you see like a, a development studio in the states or you know other parts of Europe? Or I think you know n never say never. We are in terms of the uh, where, where we make games, the development. Yeah. It's it's uh, it's all Poland. So the, the uh, main headquarters is in the capital in in Warsaw, yeah. and we have a. Pretty big studio in Krakow, in the southern part of Poland, and in the uh, southwest Poland, uh, in Wrocław. So, I think for us, maybe it will change. But as of now, and for the foreseeable future, we really uh, want uh, uh, not to waste time on communication between the entities. And right. I think, even like we're talking back in the day, like the, the time difference with LA, or, yeah. or or you know a lot of different parts in the world. We also have an office in Shanghai. It just makes things makes things slower. Uh, so for business, for marketing, for PR, yeah. I think we can handle that. Mm -hmm. uh, but if if you want to take um, certain uh, development decisions or creative decisions, you know, if, if if we have to wait this time and then it's the whole production process, I I think it just makes us slower, and I wouldn't want that at at least for yeah. now. Maybe we just don't know how to manage it. I, I was asking myself how other people do that, so maybe we don't know something. No, well, but it, I think there's you know something unique about you being in Poland, you know, being so focused on that. I, I was wondering, do you have any sense of, or do you even know, like, being in Poland? How do you think that changes the kind of games you make, or do you think it influences sort of you know your? Hmm. your yeah, for sure. I, I think way? you know philosophically. I, I, I mean, it's uh, a philosophically, question. I think you know. Um, 
And th 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 this question was asked uh, uh, around the development of The Witcher many times, and yes. obviously Witcher is based on uh, Andrzej Sapkowski's books and his creations with a, a lot of Slavic mythology. Uh, I think f for um, uh, for which we're using the the, the, the the blueprints of the castles, we're visiting local armories uh, in the area, so so it's very authentic. But then I think it, it also has uh, quite a lot of the Polish sensibility. So if if, if we move to, to to Cyberpunk 2077, it's obviously different. It's it's California, but I think you will you will you will, you will hopefully feel a, a little bit of the <laughs> Polish soul um, uh, in, in in CP as well. Yeah. Talking about sort of you know the evolution of the company, obviously you know lots of Witchers, but the, the Cyberpunk project is something that you know has been uh, germinating for many many years inside of there. Um, can you maybe talk a bit about you know like your philosophy of how you decide which games you make and how you make them? And it's you know you obviously have a unique cadence to how you guys build the company. You've built a very large you know public company that is really defined by just a couple games, and uh, you know. Conventional wisdom, especially in the West, is like, well, you, you can't really work that way, right? You have to have this constant throughput of all these things and, you know, quickly turn out sequels and whatnot. And, <laughs> and you guys, you know, I mean, you have Witcher coming to Switch, which is cool. And, I mean, you're certainly doing other things and Gwent and whatnot. But tell me a bit about the sort of philosophy of, you know, how, how the company has evolved into how you develop and what you pick to develop. Yeah, when you, when you, when you, when you say, um, you know, say big and public, it yeah. sounds scary, like boo. <laughs> uh, the, but the, the to your credit, trend, I mean, yeah. it's, you know, <laughs> what's the market cap uh, of uh, CDPR? No, I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Billions of dollars, right? Yeah, sort of. Yeah, so, so I'm that's just, like, you know. It's so, it so happens. It's, exactly. all, it's exactly. not my <laughs> fault. Um. But it's so impressive, I think, and especially, you know, in Poland, that, you know, you've been able to build a company with that yeah. kind of capitalization, which it still has creativity <laughs> at the heart of it, and, you know, you can take the time to build these games. Yes, yeah, so I think let's, let's, let's start from the end. Yeah. Like, um, uh, because we, we, our, our philosophy always was that, first of all, it's personal. So I, I co-founded the company with Michal. Michal is still one of the key shareholders. Uh, we are in touch. He's, he's not uh, at the company active anymore. But uh, in terms of the board, we, we are a group of friends working together for 15, 20 years. Um, also, we control a significant part of the company. So we have full control of, 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 of our fate. And I think this is fundamental to what we're doing because um, uh, there's nobody telling us what to do. It, these are always our choices, and um, I think that's that's why we can we can take very brave decisions, both creatively and and on the business front. Yeah. Like, uh, and it, it, it's not that I'm so smart right now because that's uh, that's uh, how I am. <laughs> it's because we learned it the hard way. So um, obviously, we've built the company step by step, bit by bit. And if you look, yeah. for example, at Witcher One. Uh, we needed financing towards the end of the project, and uh, we had to do uh, sort of a publishing arrangement. I mean, we kept all the intellectual yeah. property uh, rights and uh, full creative control, but we had Atari as a, as a publisher. And things we were struggling with, like the box and what goes into the box. So the mm, initial launch edition in the West and in the US yeah. was just a DVD box uh, with an O-ring, slip-on. Yeah. And the Eastern European one, when we had full control, were like four DVD boxes uh, with a soundtrack, with a huge game compendium. So um, you know, we're learning sort of um, incrementally uh, that if we want to really deliver what we want to deliver, we have to have the full freedom across across the whole sort of production process. So from yeah. the mm, inception of the ID and, and deciding whether we want to go ahead with it or not, to the moment that the gamer holds the game in his or her hands, or right now on a hard drive, because uh, a lot of us is downloading game. So I think this is fundamental. We, we do everything ourselves. So yeah. if we suck somewhere, it's on us. It's <laughs> nobody else to blame. But if it's a success, it's yeah. the success of the people and of the teams. And, and we are, actually, I am immensely proud of it. And I think, uh, I think the whole team. So th there's really nobody telling us what to do. And how do we, how do we choose what we want, we just talk and, and we see yeah. if, uh, if uh, mm, there is a lot of passion around it. And that was exactly Cyberpunk. So we brought ideas of different things and Cyberpunk was one of them. And th 
the, the, the amount of excitement was incredible and uh, there's a lot of people playing the pen and paper and, and yeah. we decided, yeah, that's, that's the way to go. And, and obviously today, like, you know, with, uh, with Cyberpunk being more hot and, and, and even before us going out with the game, if you look like Blade Runner, yeah. um, if you look at Outer Carbon from Netflix, um, you could you could see yeah the, those kind of obvious it, it was totally not obvious and we didn't know what the reception is uh, I mean will be I still remember it was actually already seven years ago when yeah. when we showed the, the reveal the CGI oh, yeah, first, yeah. Uh, the first one sort of a, a vision of the world if you will um, and um, our internal goal in terms of number of views was if we get to one million within a week or so yeah. it will be really amazing and so. Uh, Mm, we, we, we got 10 million views. So it was like our thinking versus the reality. Right. We, we, we thought one is, is great, <laughs> was 10. So th there was already appetite. I think we, we, um, we really uh, mm, touched a, 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 a hidden, hidden yeah. jam, right. so to speak. So Cyberpunk, as you said, you had that you know, vision piece, and then obviously there was a long wait to sort of find out more about it, and you were obviously, you know, you were working on Witcher stuff. How is the company, like, structured today? Like, is, you know, the majority of the company on uh, Cyberpunk right now? Yeah, so just, just um, structurally, may maybe, um, yeah. just to put it in order. So, uh, we, are, we are getting close to, to, to uh, 1,000 talented individuals. Wow. Um, mostly in Poland, uh, we have smaller marketing and PR offices around the world. Yeah. Um, and uh, around this 700 is development, 400 something is cyberpunk. So, okay. so roughly, so the vast majority of okay. our teams are working on cyberpunk. We also have Gwent. Uh, we also have GOG.com, uh, our digital distribution platform. And then we have uh, a, a very strong internal publishing arm. So yeah. uh, whatever you see out there, the arts, mm -hmm. um, the boxes, the collector's edition, it, it's all our own internal um, production. Kay. I mean, we don't physically produce the pieces ourselves, but we yeah. uh, organize the production. So, so th but there's sort of like, you know, the is it fair to say kind of like the Witcher 3 team moved on to Cyberpunk? Yeah, there's sort of one yeah, big yeah, team yeah, yeah, that yeah, does yeah. one game at a time? Yes, yes. Uh, and actually, uh, our our dream for the future is to be able to have two teams right. working simultaneously at the product and uh, at, at, at two big games at a time. Uh, and why I'm saying it's, it's a dream because uh, uh, we thought it's way easier, and on Witcher 3, actually, the announcement of Cyberpunk yeah. seven years ago, we thought, okay, so we'll have Witcher, and then we'll set up a team for Cyberpunk, no problem, it, it will yeah. go smoothly. And but then, slowly they but then when Witcher, you yeah. embark uh, on the adventure of actually finishing the game yeah. uh, with a huge open world, you realize you need uh, all the resources. So mm -hmm. we actually then had only a, a, a small sort of pre-production team on Cyberpunk, right. and uh, everybody else uh, moved to Witcher 3. Yeah. Um, so right now we are more realis like ev uh, realistic. Everybody is on on CP and yeah, going to separate. Okay. Mm. Um, I wanted to ask you kind of more of a vision question about you know where you see games going. You're doing you know these epic open world you know incredibly rich deep uh, you know story experiences, but you know we're in a world where there's obviously a lot happening with multiplayer. You know cloud is sort of coming into the picture. Do you think the style of games that CDPR makes is going to sort of change or evolve in a more of kind of a multiplayer direction or a cloud direction or do you, you know, it's, I'm curious like obviously cyberpunk is what it is but as you think in the future like do you, do you think it's going to start to shift the kind of games you make? I think um, actually people and that's what Keanu said on stage that he was drawn to a fascinating story and, yeah. and I think that's that's the beauty of, uh, of, of the games we are doing. Uh, I think people always love great stories and we are great storytellers. So uh, I, uh, uh, I, I, I don't think this is going to change anytime soon. Right. And the uh, development of technology it w w will just allow us to, to deliver it to, 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 to more gamers all around the world. Yes, so someone yeah. who cannot afford a console or, 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 or you know, a high-spec PC, uh, maybe we'll be able to stream the game somehow on, on, on iPad or, or, or something else. Yes, right. just, just with a hand control. So I think this is super exciting. In terms of the of the online experience, I mean, we we have some R and D. We definitely would like to learn. And obviously, Gwent, our our yep. Witcher card game, it, it's it's a it's a huge learning lesson uh, for us in terms of how to operate a live game and, right. and how to get constant updates. 
having said that, I think we, we, are, we are fully focused and committed to storytelling and, right. uh, and this epic experiences. So yes, expanding, definitely, we are looking right. to that, but uh, uh, here and now it's, it's, it's big story games like, like Cyberpunk or Witcher. But, what's wrong with that? But people, I think, you know, want more story. And I think, you know, when you think of Cyberpunk, how that game evolves, you know, coming out April and it's going to be great. But it's like, do you think of, like, expansions and, you know, all that content? And do you have a roadmap or plan on sort of how you add more story and sort Definitely. of new ways? Of course. Yeah. Uh, we are a well-organized company. We okay. have a roadmap. <laughs> I didn't say anything <laughs> else. <laughs> no. <laughs> but it's always this, like, hey, so what's going to be in the fifth expansion? Right. Let me tell you. No, no. That's no. No, I'm, just, but I'm <laughs> curious about the cadence. Of uh, the I mean, yeah, yeah we, we, we we have a solid plan, but but as I mentioned with The Witcher 3, what we've learned is that uh, uh, we have to put uh, all we have and, and then some to, to finish the game and get yeah. it in front of you guys. And then obviously, you know, we, we would love to have more, but uh, also I think it's, it, it, it's interesting uh, mm, uh, from sort of marketing PR standpoint, and uh, we do not want gamers to lose focus. Let's right. let's talk sure. about the great thing that's coming and not the thing yeah. after it. And um, I think there will be there will be so many things to do and so many different ways yeah. uh, to to explore CP. Like because on top of the uh, of the open world uh, and the interactive story, we have the full character customization. So you know you can you can really be who you want to be in the game. And and then we have uh, the freedom of gameplay. So three. Uh, uh, I mean the fluid class system, and, and so the way to, to tackle quest will be very different than in The Witcher, and uh, I think there will be a lot of uh, sort of repetitive tank, uh, takes on certain quests. Kay. But yeah, we, we definitely would like to tell more stories in, in Cyberpunk yeah. world too. Now, one of the big reveals that Keanu did at the uh, press conference was release date. Um, you know, I think everyone's excited to have a, a target date there, or the date it's coming out. Um, and you've been, you know. Publicly, a couple weeks ago, you talked a lot about, you know, the idea of sort of crunch and development and the challenges of big teams, you know, building these games and the, you know, the, the sheer effort that needs to go into building this thing. This is a long project for you guys to sort yep. of build this. Feels like you're kind of finally getting towards the end. Can you maybe t talk a bit about sort of, you know, your philosophy of kind of development and, you know, the, the effort that it takes to get a game this big ready for next April and knowing that, you know, targeting that and, and planning that out and making sure that people are still, you know, I think the, 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 the more games we release, uh, uh, I think the more th the better we are with, with the planning. But uh, again, uh, the beauty um, and the tough part of games development is that uh, all the pieces are constantly moving and being updated yeah. and upgraded. So you know, you have new technology. It's not like the I don't know the cameras. Like you, you maybe have a new version once in a while, but it's yeah. still the same thing. Here uh, we have new platforms, new technologies, and 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 they're constantly coming new things. Uh, so actually, especially in terms of uh, of of the final stages, we, we we never can anticipate, you know, how many bugs we'll have. Yeah. I think, uh, we 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 can plan that we'll have way more than we planned, but uh, that <laughs> has, that's as far as we can go. But I think uh, we're we are managing quite well, yeah. and uh, the team is bigger, so uh, we can share the load better as well. Yeah. So you think, you know, of, of CDPR five years from now, is your goal, as you said, to have, you know, two teams? I mean, I think it's, you know, obviously fans want more Witcher, right? And right now it's kind of like, hey, we're working on Cyberpunk. And is it, do you think it's, it's more like you're going to alternate franchises or do you have a sense of how that's going to evolve or it's too early to know? Yeah, I think you know we we have a plan, but I think what's what's uh, well, he's not going to share it here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, let me go home. Then. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think I'm just, it, what's interesting, no, no, I think, is that the fans. Yeah, no, no, just, just I, I want to, I want, I want to, to tell you a little bit how we approach it. Because yeah. Obviously, we have a plan, and uh, we know what we want to do. But then we look at things, and and uh, actually, we are, we're really looking uh, how gamers uh, uh, receive what we release, how they like it, and and then we actually tweak the plans. Um, so. Yes, we would laugh at certain points to tell more stories uh, about The Witcher, but when and how, I, I cannot tell you now. So it is the CP now, and then once we finish the game, and uh, hopefully uh, you all guys like it, 
uh, then we see, okay, so that's where we are, that's what we've learned, and right now we're, we're, we are taking it further. Because yeah. one thing which, 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 which I hope is visible, we, we are not a games factory. Um, we treat games as an art, and uh, we want to mm, push the bar, bar higher with every single game release. So it's not about getting w Witcher 3.5 out there, which, which would be fairly easy, of course, it's it's still very difficult, but I know the using the same engine, telling the same stories, uh, the technology is established, and and making a quick dollar. Th that's not about it. That's why we are working on CP right now, and and I think this will open a lot of new possibilities for us, and we'll learn a lot in due course, and then we'll able to take this learning and hopefully you know work on 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 more great stuff. So ultimately, it's about delivering new yeah. amazing gaming experiences uh, with stories and 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 pushing the the, the, yeah. the gaming and the gameplay further. I think it's, it's, it's a very vague statement, but this is really our philosophy. And actually, like, I'm, I'm, I'm quite often laughing that if we would film our board, board <laughs> meetings, it, it could be perceived as a freak show, yeah. because <laughs> so, so people expect it to be like, you know, serious guys sitting in suits and, and you know, Here's the making plan. some calculations yeah. in Excel, there is a master plan. And sometimes we turn things upside down and we throw things away and, and you know, we, we really play with it. For us, for us it's fun and, and um, we really want to, uh, to do kick us stuff and, and uh, at, at a certain moment if I think if one be able to do it, this will become really boring. So, so expect the unexpected. <laughs> Although we can expect Cyberpunk April next year, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's, I mean, tell, tell us a bit about to wrap up to you know picking that date, putting it out there. That's yeah. a very public statement of like yes. thinking you're going to hit yes. that date. So, what is the kind of state of development now? I mean, the game is. Can you kind of play through it, and the team's yes, feeling pretty good yes, about yes, it? Yes, yes, yes. I mean, uh, we, we we feel very good about it. And obviously, the, 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 the polishing part, this, this is always the most challenging, and so yeah. um, it's hard to see. But uh, uh, it's it's based on the new uh, Red Engine, uh, our own proprietary technology that we've, again, rework, reworked to a huge extent. So yeah. uh, y you will see quite some amazing bells and whistles graphically. Uh, th that's also important, but we always treat it as a, as a part of the storytelling. Yeah. So. Uh, we're quite confident right now, and you know we'll be working hard to to deliver it on time for you guys. And in terms of the scale of that, compare you know you talked about Keanu how many lives like, is there any sense of like compared to Witcher like how many you know how much dialogue there is or the scale of sort of the experience and how much there is in there? So actually we, we had uh, we had discussion asked a lot, and as the game is not uh, finished, yet, uh, yeah. it's not finished. It's yeah. it's really hard to give you a number, yeah. and also um, I think. First of all, it will be huge, so no yeah. shortcuts here, for sure. And then the exploration is not only vertical, but horizontal right. uh, with the magazine. Yeah, sure, sure. So actually, w we'll have to have things really close to be able to, 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 yeah. to make any calculations, and then it will highly depend on the gameplay style. So yeah. uh, it will be probably different when you'll be just uh, butchering through uh, with, with the strong solo. And, and just shooting your way through the game, and it will be different when, when you'll be hacking uh, uh, as a netrunner. So, so, so very different experience. Like a dialogue perspective, do you have a sense of like how much story? Yeah, is there? it's it's huge. I think yeah. Witcher Witcher rich kind of story. So yeah, yeah, oh, numbers, numbers. No, no numbers. Not gonna hold <laughs> you down. But no, I gotta say, yeah. uh, you know, this game is is clearly one of the most anticipated up there. And I think what's great is it it looks so fresh and. And you know, captures the imagination, but it comes from a studio that uh, you know, coming off okay. Witcher 3, which won you know, game of the year, uh, for you guys to follow up with this is uh, it, it gets us all excited. I think about where games are going. So uh, thank you so much for coming by. Thanks to you and, and everyone at, at CDPR uh, for much, pushing man. our industry forward continually, and we look forward to uh, playing it next April. Guys, give it up, Marshall, CD Project Rat. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks man.